on. The end of ideologies. On the exhaustion of political ideas in the 50s? Oh, Marty. I liked it. But then I enjoy a survey of history without any particular commitment. The story of my life. No Jenny yet. I thought it was her turn to bring the sandwiches today. Don't worry, we're not doomed to starvation. It's only quarter past 12, and we have 30 minutes before we can even consider her late. Standing next to you is like being in the middle of the Macy's Christmas window, cast as the invisible man. What? Hi, Sarah. Hi. Who's that? I think he's in one of my classes. You'll find, perhaps even in this room, some people who still labor under the illusion of the big brother complex. They see the media as a gratuitous display of capitalist evil. But taking all this into consideration, we might observe with unquestioned validity, uh, if there is such an animal, that we live in a mediated society. Our experiences are dictated somewhat vicariously by media mediated experiences. Writers you probably are already aware of uh, my biases in discussing other cultures, ideology, and media. So you won't be surprised to discover that we're going to talk in this class about American culture. It's probably the only culture we can negotiate. Part of the purpose of this class will be to examine the media as cultural documents. Sure. Uh, have we talked about the definition of uh, culture? I rather like... Well, still at the books? God bless you, Friday. Definitely ready to party. I haven't noticed the naming day Tuesday or Wednesday ever kept you from staying out of reverently late. Yeah, but tonight I'm justified. With three women in one bathroom. How long has she been in there? About an hour. That's some kind of record. So whatever happened to quick wash Sarah out of the shower and into a pair of jeans? Hey. Oh, I hope you don't mind. No, that's fine, but not the foundation. It's Swedish and six dollars an ounce. How come no one else in the last three months has rated this kind of treatment? I'm in a very embarrassing situation. I'm going out with a guy at least 20 times prettier than I am. And I need all the help I can get. <laughs> this looks like it'd be a good Whatever happened to your one-woman campaign to destroy the old concepts of good looks as a basis for any kind of relationship? Temporary backslide. What can I say? Remember. He's just another man. Right. Only he's the man we saw the other day at the bookstore. I don't know. I think I like the brown. On second thought, maybe he is worth six bucks an ounce. Sarah, how well do you know this guy? He's beautiful. Sarah. Okay. Um, he's very bright, never takes any notes in class, but seems to remember it all anyway. I'd say he's about 25, divorced. That beats being married. You should talk. Speaking of which, how is Bob? Ask me day after tomorrow. You know, I don't really see how you're going to do that. Being married to Bob and going to law school at the same time. Is it going to be kind of rough? Keep me off the streets. Which brings us back to Jenny. Sarah. Do you know where she's going tonight? Mario's, I think. I will never understand that girl. Men constantly call her up, willing to sell their Grand Torinos for one lousy date. And she prefers to hang out at a singles meat market. Maybe she likes hamburger. When she could have steak every night? I don't get it. You don't have to. Jenny's a grown woman. She's got to make her own decisions. Uh, that's what worries me. Well, she's getting better. She told me she started locking her car doors at night. Your suggestion? Mm-hmm. Problem is, she keeps locking strangers in the car with her. Oh, no, uh-uh, no thanks. 
One glass of wine is my limit. I am what's known in the vernacular as a cheap drunk. I can't imagine you being a cheap anything. Have you started your paper yet? It's really getting late. You don't have to go yet. No sign of daybreak yet. It's not even close. And there are no classes tomorrow. Well, unfortunately, the library is open tomorrow, and scholastic duty calls. You know, I really like being with you. You're not oppressive like most women. Listen, all I know is I'm really getting tired, okay? You can't go yet. Hey, that hurts! Sit down and finish your wine. Uh, look, I'm sorry if I hurt you. Sometimes I forget how fragile women are. Obviously, you don't know how tired I am. Listen, it's been a great evening and all, but I'm really tired and I really have to go home. Now, either you can drive me or I'll walk. Okay. Don't go me yet. Hey! Not until I say so. Look, you really want to spend the night, don't you? Um, listen, I'm really thirsty for something besides wine. Mr. Radio? So how about some tea? Hey, hey, we were just thinking about a little after-hours tea party. Hey, Sarah, want some tea? Jenny was going to make us some tea. That's fine. Sarah, your leg's bleeding. What? Let me see. I think it's more blood than cut. I'll get you a washcloth.
What are you doing? I'm going to phone the police. No. I can't talk to them. I just want to take a bath. And forget it. It's okay. You're safe now. I'll go run the bath water. No, Jenny, not yet. He made me wash my face. And then he took me home like nothing had happened. He acted so ordinary. I was nice to him. I let him kiss me goodnight. Why can't men just learn to control their feelings? We're talking about someone who's sick. Go make some tea, please. It didn't have anything to do with sex or feelings or anything. I'm so controlled. You're feeling guilty, aren't you? Sarah, just because you want to forget it doesn't mean it'll go away. Listen to me, please. I was raped five years ago. When it first happened, I didn't tell anyone. I thought I could handle it by myself. Only I couldn't. I mean, it wasn't like it was there all the time. It, it just kept coming back like a ghost that I couldn't get rid of by myself. Last year, I finally went to a counselor. Who did it? A friend of my father's. A business acquaintance. During the summer, I used to um, babysit with his children while his wife went to school. One evening, he came around to see my father. And my parents were out. I was alone. Does Bob know? When I first told him, I, I thought he'd want to kill the guy or something. But he didn't say a word. He just walked out and left me alone. He came back a couple of hours later and held me in his arms. We cried together. Did it make any difference? I don't think it's ever that easy. But we worked it out. Unfortunately, Bob was around for a lot of the anger. I tried to hide my feelings so long, keeping it in, and feeling like it was my fault somehow or another. During the counseling sessions, I finally allowed myself to get mad to even hate him for what he did to me. I still get angry with him because he took something from me. Not sexually or, or spiritually. But it's never been the same. Bear. I guess I'll always regret I never reported it, Sarah. I'll never know if he did it again, if other women had to suffer like you, like now. I'm not saying you have to take it to the Supreme Court tonight. Just take it one step at a time. You can decide later whether or not you want to press charges or go to court or whatever. Tonight, all you have to do is report it. Oh, no. I'm not ready. Maybe it would help to call the Rape Crisis Center. Maybe. It's your decision, Sarah. Jenny with the tea.
because you're on the phone a long time. Sometimes it helps to talk to a sympathetic stranger. What's that? Oh, it's my clothes. They told me that the police would probably want to run some tests on them. And they said not to take a bath. I guess I'm ready. I'll go get my purse. Okay. What made you decide to report it? I don't know. I was talking to Marty, to the woman at the center. Ready? Oh, yeah. Oh, she said that the official police definition of rape is whenever a woman says no, but the man forces sex with her, no matter what the circumstances. Oh, Sergeant Hill. Well, what can I do for you? Yeah, files on... No, just a sec. Okay, Hampton. Okay. Callaway, got it. And Matheson. Okay, I'll bring them up myself right away. Well, that takes care of the preliminary business. Are you doing okay? Are you sure you don't want your friends with you? No, I want to do this alone. All right. I want you to tell me in your own words exactly what happened. We went out to eat. And then to a movie, and then back to his apartment for a drink. So what happens when she's finished talking to Sergeant Hill? I suppose she'll have to go to the hospital for some tests. That's why I didn't want her to take a bath. Why don't we go down the hall for some coffee? I just want to think. And not Sarah. She's always so careful. It should have happened to me. It should never happen to anyone. Let's get some coffee. The second time was longer. And when I thought he was going to climax, he stopped. Then he got up, put his pants back on, and sat on the couch without a word. I just laid on the floor. Then he told me to get out and wash my face. And when I didn't do anything, he pulled me up and took me to the bathroom. I got scared because I thought he was going to do something again. But he just turned on the faucet and pushed me toward the sink. And afterwards, he took me home. Sarah, I'm going to have to ask you some very sensitive questions. I know it may be difficult, but it's necessary for the report and for evidence. Did he force you to have sexual intercourse against your will? Yes. What did he use to threaten you with? Well, he didn't have a gun or a knife, if that's what you mean. I mean, the glass shattered, and everything happened fast. He was on top of me. I was afraid. There was nothing I could do. Was intercourse vaginal or anal? Vaginal. Did he force you to have oral intercourse? No. Was penetration made by his penis or another object? His penis. And do you know if he climaxed? Uh, I'm not sure. Did you feel that your life was in danger, that he might hurt or kill you? Well, I never thought about him killing me. But, I mean, I knew he would hurt me. I think I screamed. But I never fought him. Not really. I should have fought. <laughs> Sometimes we have no control over the situation. There's no set formula to prevent a rape. Some methods might work in some cases. Sometimes it can get us into worse trouble. Will you arrest him? If you decide to press charges, yes. Sarah, you've done a good job. It takes courage to come in and report a crime. But I want you to know that as difficult as this has been, it's the easiest part. It's going to get rough, and I want you to know that. What happens if I decide to press charges? We'll pick him up and bring him to the station. Tonight? As soon as we can secure a warrant for his arrest. Then you'll have to pick him out of a lineup, and there'll also be a um, vaginal exam at the hospital and... Uh... Thanks. No problem. You said a lineup. He'll see me, right? 
No, Sarah. There's a one-way mirror in the room. You can see them in, but they can't see you. Are you sure? I'm sure. Well, I'm not. All I want is to never see him again. This isn't going to work. I knew him. Nobody's going to believe that he raped me. I mean, I let him kiss me. I went out with him. Sarah, over 60% of the women who report rape knew the man involved. Knowing the accused doesn't make him any less responsible or guilty of the crime. What if he lies? What if he goes to the court and lies? If everyone told the truth, we could use a, a confessional instead of a judicial system. It's the business of the court and the police and the DA to find the truth through the lies. Sarah, I want you to know that this is the suspect's fourth defense that we know of. He's done this before? Yes. It's his fourth Jesus defense. Jesus Christ! Do you mean to tell me this didn't have to happen to me? Well, if you knew, why the hell haven't you done something about it? None of the other victims would press charges, so there was nothing we could do. Sarah, if you make the decision, maybe it'll give them the courage to step forward. Yeah. If you, if you need some more time to think or to talk to someone, your friends no. or...